Hey, Void. How you doing? Doing a good job. Uh, keeping these fairly regular so far. There was only, I believe, one day where I didn't actually uh, post anything. So hopefully I can keep up this pace. Now, I took the opportunity to continue to use that HBO Max access I currently have to pull up another movie I that caught my attention. And that was actually after I saw other people reviewing it, I figured this one would be up my alley. And that is Last Night in Soho. Uh, this one was a 20... Was it 2020 or 2021? 2021 film. Directed and, by, and written by Edgar Wright. And I'll just say right off, it definitely feels like an Edgar Wright movie. Well... Little less Shaun of the Dead, Edgar Wright, a little more Scott Pilgrim, and a little more Baby Driver. It definitely has the more stylistic elements of those ones, while definitely having a more identity all of its own, particularly as it's a more of a mystery film than an outright horror, though it definitely kicks up the horror elements in the last act pretty much to eleven. And I found myself being pretty much sucked into this one. <clears throat> it is very artistically done and is trippy as balls, and I like that. Okay, so Last Night in Soho. Uh, stars, uh, what was it? Nah. Actress I haven't seen too much. Thomasine McKenzie, who is great in the role of Eloise as she... As essentially a small town girl moving to London to go to a, fa uh, a fashion college and is having problems fit again. Now, they establish right off the bat that she's kind of spiritually sensitive because essentially occasionally she sees her dead mom just kind of standing around in the background. Well, so they kind of establish that she picks up all these things pretty early. And then uh, from there, she uh, heads to the big city is the little is uh doesn't quite fit in her roommate is way too much all the partying makes it impossible for her to sleep she's late for class she's she's struggling but then she so she decides to find move out find her own place and she does out in the soho area i believe i'm not as big upon london areas but Given the uh, name of the piece, I'm going to take it as that. Well, as soon as she falls, then things seem fine. So as soon as she falls asleep, she begins pretty much living through a girl from the 60s who wants to be an up-and-coming singer. Now, she is already kind of fixated on the 60s, so this is immediately appeals to her. She keeps, pretty much starts, so. Uh, becoming fascinated with this girl from the past who's determined to become a a star. Well, she... So, she begins designing things based off the 60s, which uh, start catching some attention in class. She starts... She dyes her hair to resemble the girl from um, her visions. She starts getting more involved, invested in that. But the more she sees... In, to the point of she's pretty much uh, blowing things off just to go home and go to bed to see more of this world. But the more she sees, the less glamour she realizes this life is. As uh, the girl from the past, Sandy, is pretty much taken in under the wing of a very sinister Matt Smith, uh, who's uh, Jack. He goes by Jack in this. And he is great in this. Is it very skeevy, perfectly done, and uh, as she is uh, slowly brought to seedier venues and eventually exploited and very much turned to a prostitute, uh, and as she's abused, eventually it looks like she is murdered by Jack, and now uh, Eloise is freaked out, can't and trying to figure out how to report a fifty-year-old murder. And on top of that, she's now seeing things even when she's awake. She'll, especially things that seem to be coming after her in the form of these malevolent spirits of the people who abused her. Or they seem like uh, the manifestations of her abuse and torment. So, 
she constantly is freaking out over things she's seeing, and she tries to end her um, budding romance with a fellow student is also put on the rocks because of, well, she's seeing ghosts. But there's a more than what's going on, and there was quite a few twists and turns. I will say there was one that I, I kind of made a guess at uh, a twist early on, and then I felt a little vindicated when the character then made that same guess, but it turns out that it was wrong. So while I was doing right to start trying to read into it, it definitely was a, a, a plot pitfall I did fall into, and I only saw the final twist coming like 30 seconds before it hit. It was, it was the idea finally popped in my head to wait a minute and... And I'm not going to give it away, because it was a good twist. I, The movie did a good job misleading me from it. And definitely, the last act gets pretty wild. In addition to all the spirits coming after her, there's also contending with the fact that the a killer from back then may still be on the loose. Especially if this killer is now made aware that Eloise knows something. So yeah, it's a fascinating little piece. Uh, the horror elements don't come into play until later, but I will say the editing is top-notch and uh, the choreography, particularly for some of the dancing, where she's constantly trading in and out with uh, her... And pa uh, uh, when she's overlaid with uh, Sandy from the past, they constantly are either switching places or one will be seen in the reflection and then next time the scene will change, their positions will be reversed. And they do this dance number with Matt Smith that is amazing. And apparently it was almost done entirely practically just through camera tricks. And it is really cool to watch. This movie is just cool. There's a lot of stylized elements that work. And they work very well. And the soundtrack is... If you like 60s bangers, this is... You'll do well here. The music is such a big focus and part of it that it uh, really drives things home. I'm going to have downtown in my head for the next week, I swear. Um, when this movie gets bloody, it definitely gets a little over the top bloody, but I like that. Uh, they, the blood seemed to be actually practical and not just CG, which I always appreciate. Uh, and the ghost effects, while a bit limited, uh, then aren't there too often. When they are there, they are effective enough. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all there is to really say about this one. I've been debating where to drop this one on my MacGuffin scale, but I got really invested in this character. I, I was legitimately concerned about what was going to happen to her. The actress was doing a great job for Eloise. Um, so, I got invested... I really enjoyed it. I'm actually going to give this one an 8 MacGuffins. It's uh, definitely one of the better films I've seen this month. i glad I got a chance to pop it in. Um, another one I would like to add to my library. That list is already very, very long, so who knows when I will, but I could say this one definitely worth owning. Alright. I think that's about it. And I've got one more to get through tonight, so see you guys soon.